Hi, how are you today? So in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at a very interesting little Super 8 home movie camera. Uh, this is the Bell & Howell Super 8 Zoom 1201. That is the model. And as I've mentioned before, uh, I've been into Super 8 photography, Super 8 movie making for decades now. I first got into Super 8 probably sometime around the mid 90s. Uh, I was really interested in it. And at that time, I bought a lot of secondhand Super 8 movie cameras. Um, at that time, Super 8 was considered really passe. Um, people were really into a lot of formats like 8mm and Hi8 and VHSC, and those were kind of the dominant home movie trends or home mo movie formats at that time. And Super 8 was considered very, very old school and very passe. So in the mid 90s, you could buy old Super 8 movie equipment dirt cheap. Now, I can't remember exactly where I bought this camera. Uh, again, I think I bought this around 1994, 1995, almost 30 years ago. I believe I bought it at a flea market. But again, I'm not 100% sure about that. But anyway, I'm going to go over this camera and show you its various features. It's a beautiful Super 8 camera. Now, to be clear, I think the last time I used this camera, the last time I actually ran film through it was in 1998. That's my best estimate. So if that's true, this thing hasn't been used in 25 years. But my gut is telling me that if I put batteries in it and fired it up, it would work just fine. So I'll go through and show you some of the features of this Bell & Howell Super 8 Zoom 1201. So here we have a nice zoom lens and there's the control for the zoom lens right there. And I recall the zoom always worked very beautifully. And also I'll mention that the zoom works from two feet to infinity. So very, very flexible. Uh, at the bottom here, you have a little handle that can be pulled down if you want to use the camera handheld, which is how I often used it. Uh, and there's also a mount here for a tripod, which I also used as well. Uh, over here, we have the actual compartment for batteries. And as you can see, it took four AAA batteries. I always love it when old gear uses batteries that are still very, very easily found and very accessible. Uh, there's a lot of old camera gear that used uh, some old mercury cell batteries and uh, you can't buy mercury cells anymore. I've made a previous video about that and that can be a real hassle trying to find some sort of equivalent. But this takes four AAA. So up here, and this is very, very interesting, and it took me a long time to kind of understand this, and I did some reading about this online, but there's something called Focusmatic. And you can see there's a little line here, and we have basically uh, two feet to infinity, and there's like a little silver ball in a little trough that moves back and forth. And from what I understand, this is a system that was um, exclusive to Bell & Howell. They came up with this, and basically it would determine focus based upon the slant of the camera to the ground. So as you move the camera up, tilted it up or tilted it down, the little ball would move back and forth in the trough and that would dictate to the camera what the focus should be. Kind of primitive, kind of uh, very simplistic, but from what I understand it worked great. And uh, I can remember uh, the focus always working perfectly well on this camera. Uh, you also have a film counter over here, so basically there's a little red needle that will move as you use your Super 8 film cartridge, and uh, you, it would start on zero, and when you were done, when you reached the end of the film cartridge, it would go to end. On top here, you had your button that you would push to uh, run the camera, so you would push it down and let go to stop, and also if you wanted to kind of get the footage rolling and then run and get into the image, you could lock it. So you'd push it down and then push it to the left and it would stay on like so. And then you would just push it to the right again to unlock it. Over here we have our viewfinder. 
And on the other side of the camera, we have the actual compartment for the Super 8 film cartridge, which would go right in here. And uh, you can see here it says Bell and Howell Auto Load. And over here it says Bell and Howell Model 1201 Patent Pending, and we have a serial number over here. And that is basically the Bell and Howell 1201 Super 8 Zoom. Uh, a fine little movie camera, Super 8 movie camera. There's no sound on this thing. I know a lot of uh, later models of Super 8 cameras had built-in microphones and you could record sound. Um, so it was basically silent, but you could always record your sound separately with an audio recorder and uh, sync that up later in editing. Now, another thing I'll mention, if you are interested in getting into Super 8 film photography, it's still fairly easy to find old Super 8 home movie cameras. I do see them pop up from time to time in places like Goodwill, Salvation Army, uh, Value Village. They do pop up, but they're a lot more expensive now than they were back in the 90s. Uh, I think I bought this camera for maybe $10, seriously, back in the 1990s. Uh, I don't know what it would go for today, but I'm assuming it would, uh, it would demand a much higher price than that. And also I'll mention Super 8 movie making in general can be very, very pricey. Even back in the 90s, it was fairly pricey. Back then, I remember you could buy a film cartridge, which was typically 50 feet. And from that 50 feet, cart 50 foot cartridge, you could get a little over three minutes of footage. So not a lot. So if you were looking to film a, a feature-length independent film with Super 8, you'd, you'd go through a lot of movie cartridges. And back then, one movie cartridge, either black and white or color, color would be a little bit more expensive, but they were roughly in the same price range. Uh, back then it was about $20 for a black and white, and maybe $23 or $24 for a color Super 8 movie cartridge. And then you'd pay probably another $20, $25 to get it developed. So basically you were looking at about $50 for three minutes of footage, but that was 30 plus years ago. Today, I think that price would be about double. So you're probably gonna pay well over $30, $30, $40 for the cartridge itself, and probably the same amount to get it uh, developed and maybe even more to have that footage digitized. I know there are some companies like Film Photography Project that offer package deals where the, the film and the processing and the uh, digitize is all included in one package. Uh, so check that out if you're interested. You may save a little bit of money if you get sort of the package deal. But Super 8 is a lot of fun. I shot some uh, music videos with this thing. What I tended to do when I worked with Super 8, and I would recommend this to anyone, is I would shoot my footage on the Super 8 film, have that digitized, and then edit the, the digital material. And then you, you could add in sound digitally and all that. So you had the best of both worlds. You had that cool retro Super 8 film look, but you could also do things digitally and have all the power and all the uh, capabilities of digital editing and, and putting in sound and, and all of that. So it was the best of both worlds. So again, um, Super 8, it's a lot of fun. I would recommend it to anyone. Uh, again, it's not cheap, but uh, if you're willing to just sort of ignore the costs and just go with it and try it out and have fun with it, I'm sure you're really going to enjoy it. So that's my look at the Bell & Howell Super 8 Zoom 1201. Thank you for watching. Hope you can join us again next time. We'll see you again. Please feel free to leave a comment, give a thumbs up, and as always, please subscribe to the channel. It's always greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. We'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.